Okay, hi again everyone. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about the, um, how you can identify partial differential equations or PDEs using PySINDI. Uh, and uh, then I'll be talking about how to choose a regularizer and, uh, and then choose a sparse regression algorithm uh, with, uh, with PySINDI. Although there are more details in the example notebook online, so I encourage you to look at that. Um, so uh, what, we've, what I've done so far is just load in some partial differential equation data that we have lying around uh, for the kerr mota sivashinsky equation. Um, uh, if you don't know what that is, let me just uh, type it out real quick. So this is a partial differential equation uh, that looks like this. Oops, okay. Right, so it's a partial differential equation because it depends on uh, derivatives uh, involving both the time and space dimension. Uh, and you can see it's got this sort of uh, complicated structure in xt space, uh, and same with its derivative u dot, which is on uh, the plot on the other side there. Uh, so now we wanna uh, take this data and be able to fit a Cindy model to it. Uh, so let's see. Um, what we're going to do, so this, this is now data that's sort of two-dimensional, and but it's got a space and a time dimension, and we need to flatten the data so that it actually looks like a matrix that we can put into this uh, optimization problem. So that's, that's the first thing we do. We just define these flattened variables. Um, uh, so we reshape U, and uh, we just reshape it to, to be flat. Um, so the length of x times the length of t by 1. And uh, then we do the exact same thing for uh, u dot. So uh, u, u uh, the, the temporal derivative of, of u. So repeat that. Uh, then we're going to use, uh, again, a custom library with some uh, simple lambda functions. So we're we're going to uh, use uh, linear functions of the variables and quadratic function of the variables. Uh, so that it looks like this. Okay. Uh, and now we need to fit a PDE library. Uh, so uh, now we're actually using the PDE library to fit uh, uh, a true PDE. So once again, we pass these uh, library functions that we just defined and the, the names as well. Uh, otherwise, it's sort of hard to read. Oops. Uh, now some uh, PDE-specific stuff. So I'm going to ask for derivatives up to fourth order, because I know this is kerr mota sivashinsky and you can see there's a, a fourth order spatial derivative there that we need to compute. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to ask for that. Uh, it also needs a spatial grid in order to compute these derivatives, so we're going to pass the spatial grid x. Uh, and then I'm going to also indicate with the flag that uh, this spatial grid is actually uniform in space, and therefore it doesn't have to do uh, complicated non-uniform uh, derivatives. It can just do simple uh, simple uniform, uh, for instance, finite differences here. So uh, that's good. We have, uh, we have a nice uh, PDE library that's going to generate uh, spatial derivative terms that are put into this candidate library term appearing here. And now uh, we're just, uh, we need to define an optimizer. So let's do PDE opt equals sequentially threshold least squares. So again, we because we've done everything in the library, we, you can actually still use any of the sparse regression optimizers that were available before. So pick whatever one you want. Um, we're going to pick some threshold, and we're also going to use this uh, flag normalize columns equals true. And this basically um, takes this, uh, builds this candidate library theta for the PDE, but then it, it takes each of the columns of theta and normalizes it 
uh, so that the largest value is equal to one. And this basically just uh, sort of s makes each of the columns of data similar magnitudes. Uh, and this tends to help for many problems, uh, and especially for PDE problems where you might have higher order spatial derivatives, uh, where otherwise the magnitudes of these columns and theta uh, might be very different. Uh, so this sort of normalization really helps the, the optimization. So uh, that's our optimizer, and then we uh, do our normal thing. Fitty Cindy model, pass the optimizer, pass the feature library, um, and I guess I, I called the feature names uh, U here, uh, and I think that's it. Now, uh, one other change here is when we call model.fit, we need to pass the flattened uh, vector u. And uh, same thing with uh, uh, what we used to call x dot. We need to pass the flattened u dot vector. Uh, and same thing, uh, pass the, uh, well, OK, actually, we don't need to pass the time step here. But um, whoops, sorry about that. Where did my mouse go? OK, um, sorry, we want to do model.print. OK, so I probably uh, spelled something wrong. Yes, uh, so this, sh this should just be function names. It's called function names in the, in the class. Uh, but now, now we can fit. And uh, basically, we reproduce the model that, that we found. So this is u dot is uh, minus u x x minus u x x x x <laughs> and uh, same thing u u x. So uh, if we just take the PDE data, we flatten it, we build this, this library with this spatial grid, uh, and then we choose how many derivatives in space we want, we can uh, correctly identify PDEs in space. And actually, this works up to fully three-dimensional space uh, in XYZ, uh, but uh, please look at uh, the more advanced examples. We have some Jupyter notebooks doing this uh, if you want to try this, this more advanced functionality. Uh, but that's, that's so uh, a pretty simple example showing we can identify PDEs pretty well. Uh, and again, these coefficients aren't exactly minus one uh, because there's some numerical errors. Uh, the grid here is finite. Uh, and so as you shrink the grid spacing uh, and increase the number of points that you're, you're fitting in the regression, uh, these coefficients will get closer and closer to minus one. OK, um, so that's fitting PDEs. Now I wanted to talk about how do you um, choose a regularizer and a sparse regression algorithm. And for a second, I'm just going to talk here instead of actually uh, show any code. And I just wanted to have a table here that summarizes all the different uh, optimizers you use in the PySynd code. Uh, so only I, I wanted to point out a few things about it. So only the SR3 and uh, trapping optimizers allow for equality and inequality constraints. Uh, so that's an easy choice if that's, uh, that's something you want to do, building in uh, physical priors. Uh, all the optimizers actually are allowed for identifying PDEs, for using the ensembling functionality of shown, for using control inputs. Uh, so this stuff is really general and really can be used uh, interchangeably with a lot of different methods I've shown today. Uh, and then at the end, I just show uh, some of the hyperparameters that show up in these models. And the hyperparameters, which are in uh, parentheses, means they're optional. Uh, and so I just want to point out that, for instance, uh, SSR and FROLs, these algorithms, uh, in principle, have no hyperparameters. And that's the advantage of these, uh, these what are called greedy algorithms, uh, is that there's no hyperparameter. You basically just um, sort of choose how many non-zero coefficients you want in the model. And it'll just uh, work its way up there. Um, and, and actually, you don't even have to choose that because you might consider that a hyperparameter. Uh, it'll just sort of truncate terms one by one. And uh, in post-processing, you can sort of pick whatever model you, you think is the best. Um, so yeah, those, those are some of the uh, optimizers we implement. Uh, the ones that are bolded are the ones that are uh, new in this new release of PySynde. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's, that's a summary of that. Uh, and then you might have the question, so how do you actually choose between using a sparse regression algorithm that uses the L0 norm or the L1 norm? 
Uh, and once that choice is made, how do you choose which algorithm you want to use to solve the problem? And uh, I've just written a bit about this. Uh, so the advantages and disadvantages of L0. So L0 typically produces sparser solutions than using the L1 norm. This tends to lead to higher performance and more stable models because there are no small co coefficient terms that can become active with new initial conditions or new parameter regimes. The downside is that now the optimization problem here is non-convex, and uh, non-convex problems don't in general have global convergence guarantees. Uh, so it's, it's harder to solve these problems. Uh, L1 is sort of the flip side. So uh, one great thing is these can be, the L1 norm can be used with equality and inequality constraints. Uh, and and uh, this is because the problem is actually convex if you use the L1 norm here. Uh, and this also means it has global convergence guarantees. So this, uh, having a convex optimization is really helpful. Uh, the downside is that the sparsity is harder to uh, enforce and the L1 can systematically bias uh, solutions towards uh, uh, cert systematically bias the system towards certain solutions uh, in certain regimes. Uh, so um, they both have advantages and disadvantages. In general with your data, you might want to try uh, both, the, both uh, of the norms and uh, several of the different algorithms and just see what works best with your data. Uh, but those, that's sort of how you might choose between the L0 and L1 norms. And then how do you actually choose between the optimizers uh, is a little more complicated. It, uh, some things you might think about are how many hyperparameters uh, do you want to deal with in your algorithm? So SSR and FURLs in principle have no hyperparameters, which is really nice if you don't want to uh, have to tune things. Uh, and then, uh, for instance, trapping Cindy has a bunch of hyperparameters, and this is because it has extra loss terms uh, that promote stability in this, in this way I've shown early in the videos. Um, so Hyperparameters is one way to decide uh, which, um, which optimizer to use. As I said, if you have uh, physical priors that you want to build in as constraints, uh, you have to use SR3 or uh, uh, Trapping Cindy. Uh, and then otherwise, uh, you have some freedom and you can play around with things uh, to see which optimizers work best for you. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to leave it there for uh, part four, and we're going to conclude with part five and uh, uh, conclude this video series. Uh, so thanks for listening, and uh, we'll finish up next video.